Turkish election officials confirm that the presidential race is going to a runoff after incumbent Recep Tayyip Erdogan falls short of an outright victory. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says the UK will supply Ukrainian pilots with training as President Vladimir Zelensky arrives in the UK for a surprise visit. Unverified reports from Moscow claim that the Russian army have shot down a storm shadow missile in Ukraine, supplied to Kyiv by the UK. The European Union demonstrating unity ahead of G7 meeting. There was hope and anxiety in Turkey and beyond on Sunday as the country voted for its next president and parliament. The conservative incumbent Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his main challenger Kemal Kılıç Daroğlu must lock horns again in a second round run-in in two weeks' time after failing to secure 50% of the vote. This is a huge defeat for the opposition and that's why maybe some 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 of them some uh, the uh, the, the nation alliance members are going to break away from the alliance. Opinion polls had given the challenger a slight lead over Erdogan, who has ruled Turkey as prime minister and then president since 2003. <laughs> Turkey's media are dominated by pro-government outlets and commentators have condemned a lack of reliable information and unfair conditions for the parties and candidates. There was no free media, no independent judiciary, state resources were used in favour of the incumbent, electoral system is frequently changed, and if you take into account all of these, you can understand a bit better why the, 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 the polls were not necessarily so assertive in, in, in Turkey's elections. Western leaders are still holding their breath over an election which has huge international implications. Erdogan has not fared very well with the European Union in recent years. In 2018, the bloc froze Turkey's accession negotiations in response to what leaders called the country's backsliding on the rule of law and fundamental rights. Kılıç Daroğlu has vowed to restore relations with Turkey's NATO allies, which under Erdogan have stooped to historic lows. Turkey is uh, breaking away from the West, although it is a NATO member, um, spiritually, uh, Turkey is not uh, a part of uh, the NATO anymore. Turkey is aligned with Russia, with China, with uh, some other countries in the East. But I cannot see that Turkey is a part of the Western world anymore or even tries to be a part of the Western world anymore. Turkey has been hit hard by a cost of living crisis, with the latest data putting inflation at around 44%, although that's down from a high of around 86% last November. Erdogan's government also faced backlash for what critics saw was a sluggish response to devastating earthquakes in February that left 11 southern provinces devastated. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky arriving at the British Prime Minister's country residence on Monday by military helicopter. His surprise visit to the UK is part of a whirlwind European tour to secure more weapons and training to fend off Russia's full-scale invasion of his country, something Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was quick to oblige, pledging further support for Ukraine's aerial defence. It is not a straightforward thing, as Vladimir and I have been discussing, to make build up that fighter uh, combat aircraft capability. It's not just the provision of planes, it's also the training of pilots and all the logistics that go alongside that. Now, the UK can play a big part of that. One thing we will be doing, starting actually relatively soon, is uh, training of Ukrainian pilots. There is no doubt that the UK is in the lead when it comes to expanding the Ukrainian army's capabilities. But other European allies are also contributing, with France, Germany and Italy all promising more military support in the course of Zelensky's recent visits. <laughs> Wounded soldiers fresh from combat, newly evacuated from Bakhmut, where the longest and fiercest battle of the war in Ukraine is raging on. Casualties on both sides are reaching into the thousands, while Russia maintains control over most of the city, Ukraine appears to have reclaimed some positions, as incessant rumours of an imminent counter-offensive continue to ring loud. Tensions between the leader of Russia's mercenary Wagner group and the Russian army are also mounting. 
with rumors that Wagner chief Yegemi Prigozhin offered to betray the position of Russian troops to Kyiv, something both Prigozhin and the Kremlin deny. Meanwhile, Moscow claimed on Monday that its forces had shot down a long-range Storm Shadow missile donated to the Ukrainian army by the UK, a report that is yet to be verified. Russian missiles continue to hit infrastructure and buildings in inhabited areas, including this educational center in Kherson. Elsewhere in eastern Ukraine, Russian missiles have hit a hospital, killing four people. In the occupied territories, the Russian-imposed interior minister in Luhansk has been injured in an apparent bomb attack. Russian forces conducted another series of drone and missile strikes against Ukraine over the weekend. The Institute for the Study of War says increasingly regular series of Russian drone and missile strikes are likely a part of a new Russian air campaign in Ukraine, aimed at degrading Ukrainian abilities to conduct counteroffensive operations in the near term. The new Russian air campaign appears to be focused on Kyiv and alleged Ukrainian military, industrial and logistics facilities in deep rear areas, says the Institute for the Study of War. The alleged targets and limited nature of this campaign indicates that Russian forces are immediately concerned with current Ukrainian capabilities to launch counteroffensive operations, although the diminished effectiveness of these strikes are likely not significantly constraining Ukrainian capabilities writ large. Ukrainian forces continued counterattacking around Bakhmut on Sunday, Ukrainian Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Maler reported that Ukrainian forces captured over 10 Russian positions on the northern and southern outskirts of Bakhmut over the course of the day on Sunday. Ukrainian Eastern Group of Forces spokesperson Colonel Serhii Trevate emphasized that Ukraine's main goal in Bakhmut is to destroy Russian concentration areas and encircle the city, not to conduct frontal assaults. The Russian Defense Ministry denies these reports, saying, quote, there has been no breakthrough in the defense of Russian force. Moscow says that Ukraine has made massive attempts to break through to the north and south of Bakhmut, claiming all the attacks of the armed forces of Ukraine have been repelled. The Institute for the Study of War says the Russian Ministry of Defense is attempting to distract from recent Ukrainian successes near Bakhmut by praising Russian defensive efforts against the Ukrainian counterattacks. Displaying a united European front ahead of the G7 in Japan, the meeting of the world's most industrialized countries. The President of the European Commission and the President of the European Council presented the issues at stake from Brussels. The 27 are currently negotiating an 11th package of sanctions against Russia. The aim is to target third countries in Asia, the Caucasus and the Middle East that allow the EU's bans to be circumvented. Regarding third countries that buy directly in the European Union and then potentially deliver sanctioned goods um, to uh, Russia. Here, too, the discussion is, and it's basically a warning, that we're serious about our sanction, um, that we could ban these goods from going to that third country if there is clear evidence that this is a circumvention of, ten, uh, of sanctions and uh, deliver, deliveries uh, to Russia. The issue of China will be omnipresent in these meetings. The EU is calling for a recalibration of its ties with Beijing. EU leaders stress the need to reduce risks without breaking ties. New EU sanctions could affect Chinese companies. Yet only Beijing is capable of influencing the Kremlin, according to the EU leaders. The President of the European Council said that the G7 should not focus solely on Ukraine. Developing and emerging countries have expressed concerns that the G7 is focusing too much on Ukraine and not paying enough attention to their needs and priorities. And we have heard their concerns. We want to build strong partnerships with developing and emerging countries in ways that are mutually beneficial. The EU is walking a tightrope this week. National interests lead to different analyses of international issues. This is why the two leaders stress the need for the 27 to strengthen their strategic, industrial and economic autonomy.
Brussels has given the green light to the purchase of the video game company Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. To clear up doubts about whether this operation harms competition, Microsoft has promised to respect some conditions for a period of 10 years. Valued at around 63 billion euros, the purchase will give Microsoft the control of popular online games such as Call of Duty, World of Warcraft and Candy Crush. To finalise the deal, Microsoft must overcome two obstacles, a trial in the United States and a veto on the merger in the United Kingdom. In Thailand, reformist opposition leader Pitta Leiter Onra says he is willing to become prime minister. After a surprise election result gave his progressive move forward party a majority in parliament. The 42-year-old said he will form a six-party coalition. People of Thailand have already spoken their wish and I, I am ready to be the prime minister for all, whether you agree with me or you disagree with me. I have congratulated uh, Khun Pa Thong Thanh from Phuet Thai for her hard-fought campaign and have invited her to join the coalition. And that uh, includes uh, five more parties in the previous opposition. Leiter Ron Ra's victory signals a major swing towards democratic reform and the rejection of military-backed parties. Nine years ago, outgoing Prime Minister General Prayuth Chanaka led a military coup which ousted the elected government.